Hallelujah. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy hand for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Amen. I'm also going to be reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 15. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 15. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have brought him. And he shall make his way prosperous. Today, I'm going to share with you, I'm called to prosper. Everybody say that. I am called to prosper. All right. What is prosperity? I have a definition of prosperity and clarify uh, the confusion in the hair. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember of misconception about prosperity and it has often been said that uh, once you are born again, you are under constraint of prospering like others. Once you are following Christ, you are sublet to some level of poverty. It is often being misconstrued that when you are a child of God, there are some things that you are not entitled to partake in. Uh, we are going to be looking at that clearly today. To know what position are we are we supposed to be in relation to prosperity as a child of God? What is prosperity? All right, I'm going to be reading from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. I will take my definition from there. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. And the law was with Joseph. And he was prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master in Egypt. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Hallelujah. Now, let's get this thing clearly. Uh, prosperity, as some of us might think it is, we often think that prosperity is just having a total financial uh, paper money breakthrough, and then you are on your own. You are not under anybody. But we are told here that uh, Joseph was under his supervision of his master remember in the house of potiphar we all know what joseph was doing there he was sold to slavery he was sold to slavery in that very house and so actually he was not a free man he was serving a potiphar and we were told that here in the scripture that he was a prosperous man despite being a service man being sold into slavery then the question comes that then there must be something deeper than prosperity being interpreted as just a money-making uh, kind of divination uh, it's more than paper money that is that they bastardized to me money making language uh, celebrated by the tycoons so prosperity is deeper than what we think it is all right joseph was also in the prison if you look at that particular uh, chapter 
that he, he was prosperous and yet he was in prison he was appointed to be a supervisor in that prison hallelujah Amen. yet the bible say he was prosperous inside the prison how can somebody be prospering <coughs> inside imprisonment i would think otherwise that prosperity should just be ordinarily being a total freedom you're not under any leadership you are on your own you have the capacity to give everything to everybody you are like, you are a rich man as we, we, most of us will say you know the, the rich tycoons but unfortunately this is not the perspective of the scripture about prosperity Prosperity from God does not come necessarily because of enabling surrounding situation. We can see that the situation surrounding Joseph doesn't make any difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Why does it not make any difference? Because we are told he was prosperous inside the house that he was sold into under the supervision of Potiphar. We were told that he, by Joseph was prosperous in the prison so that means the environment the situation that you are in does not make any difference so prosperity exists despite this this enabling condition so in clear definition prosperity is a condition of thriving Everybody say thriving. 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 Yeah. To thrive is to grow vigorously despite limitation. To thrive is to grow vigorously despite the surrounding limitation. So therefore, con in conclusion, prosperity does not have anything to do with the situation or environment you are, but what you make out of the environment it's not what environment make you to be but what you make the environment to be to you so what you make out of the situation you are has a lot to do with prosperity hallelujah are you following me now let's look at clearly what third john 2 said third john 2 all right I hope you are following me. I need to be hearing your voice so that I know that this word is going to somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you hearing me? Amen. Okay. Amen. Third John 2. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now you can see clearly prosperity has nothing to do with physical limitation circumstantial challenges but it has a lot to do with what we make out of it hallelujah we know that moses was born into difficult situation you see how he was prosperous despite the difficult situation take it from a mother's house put in a river was picked up in the river put in the palace from the palace went out of the palace, ran away and god appeared to him and god see it's all sort of inconvenient uh, circumstance that give back to his prosperity and the bible makes us to to understand there's no one prophet like moses hallelujah Amen. praise the lord Amen. now why does god want you prosperous that's the question here so if prosperity it's much more than just money making or environment or circumstance then what is it what is it and then why does god want you prosperous hallelujah number one Amen. god wants you prosperous he wants us prosperous because he rejoices in your prosperity that's the reason why I'm so sorry. This is how it is. God likes to brag about his children. Maybe you want to put a brag in quotes. 
God likes to get excited about the children. As some mentality of, of us in the past years, thinking that whenever God sees us, it will be so sad. So we are actually worshiping an unknown God that uh, whenever we have to go to him, we have to cringe. We have to start crying and beating ourselves up. Do you know that God is not excited with that? <laughs> God is not exalted in your disaster. Actually, Jesus Christ cries when you fail. Hallelujah. That's why you want to understand this morning and get the misconception out of your system and get back to what true divination of prosperity is all about. God rejoices in the prosperity of his children. We saw the case with, uh, with, with Solomon. We saw the promises God delivered to David to pass across to his son. We also saw the case of David himself. We have seen sample, several cases. Even Abraham himself, that to the extent of having to entertain visitor with a whole cow. Hallelujah. Your two, three people. He was as prosperous as that. We have seen the situation of Abraham moving to a strange land. And in the strange land, despite challenges, he was still prospering in a strange land. We've seen all this. So prosperity has a lot to do with the average condition of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So why does God want you prosperous? Because he rejoices in your prosperity. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. So our poverty is not a representation of the true gospel. <laughs> our lamenting every day for the want of food and money and clothing has nothing to do with the gospel. The gospel has the power to supply our need according to its riches by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is able to do that. Prosperity is more than what we think. God rejoices in our prosperity. Number two, why does God want you prosperous? He needs to use all about you and your lifestyle to explain himself and wonder of his presence with his children. Right? He wants to use your lifestyle, your mm. condition of life, to explain to the world that he is God. And that's why he's enjoying you prospering. So, you know, remember Jesus himself, we can see the, 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 the confidence that is demonstrated by Jesus Christ when he said to us, through the disciples, he said, you are the light of the world. You are the light. He enthroned us to be the light of the world. And the city set upon the hill cannot be eaten. So God is not intending that you will be eating service man to him. It does not intend, let me, let me repeat that again. God does not intend for you to be an eating service man to him. No. God expects that he will put you on a mountain top. So that the gospel will be shout aloud unto people to hear. Amen. God expects to put you on the mountain top so that people can see the glory of God upon your life and they will start turning unto Him. Amen. Prosperity is not cringing and hiding and crying and weeping because you are a Christian. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking to you today. Let your mind be open up. I begin to understand 
that you have greater power in you than you ought to think. Hallelujah. You have a greater power to you than what you are thinking. Genesis chapter 39 verse 3. Genesis chapter 39 verse 3. No, Genesis chapter 39 verse 23, sorry. 29 verse 23. And the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Who was that? Joseph. Because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. Hallelujah. God was announcing his presence through Joseph to the one in charge of prison. Wow. Remember, that was not only the case. We saw that the case was also that Joseph become an interpreter of every dream in that prison. To the extent that he was able to offer the deliverance of one of the prisoners through the interpretation of dream. Yet, Joseph is still inside unconducive circumstance wow hallelujah a wow. prosperous man in yeah. a prison so when god is trying to prosper you it's because he want to sound aloud his greatness his goodness he want to sound aloud that it cannot be limited by anything are you listening to me he want to sound aloud that your environment is too small to dictate to your prosperity now listen carefully i want to sound aloud that your gpa is too small to make your future great i want to tell everyone that your future is not your gpa there's something greater about your future than the gpa you are making hallelujah and i want to tell you that today it doesn't matter on what happened to your gpa that is capable of increasing your gpa in the next few semesters before you graduate he is telling you that getting job all around the place is not detected by your ability that is capable of promoting you and making you become somebody in the community we've had the testimonies among among us here one of us what god has been saying over and over you're going to become a governor you're going to become a governor but we saw how he contested as one of the school executives i mean school executive if i'm right and then <laughs> the person who was he was competing with decided to withdraw and he withdrew and the baton was given to him as the next person in that position so he was voted in without opposition that is what i'm talking about when you talk about prosperity it doesn't matter what the environment is saying it doesn't matter your credentials when the time of prosperity comes, everything around you will begin to give you room. Hallelujah. Because you carry prosperity. You ought to understand that today. Now, let's begin to break this down. Then, what are the things that signal to prosperity? Another way around, when can it be said that you are prosperous? Right? When can it be said that you are really prosperous? Because some people are prosperous, they, they don't know that they are prosperous. <laughs> they don't know. They just using one minister of God and they using one rich man as a yardstick. They invite all sort of unbelievers uh, because they have some little papers. Uh, maybe you can count billions or millions in their pocket, and they did not make them as the supervisor of their future. They make them the uh, role, uh, role model for their life because they can count papers. I want to change your orientation this morning. That gathering papers, it, it won't be the great example of prosperity. But it's much more than that. Hallelujah. I want to change your orientation today that what you've been thinking about prosperity before might be wrong. You've got to open your ear and hear what the Bible is saying about prosperity. And if you have been prosperous and you are not, you are not yet known, I want you to discuss, discover that this morning. You're going to stand up and discover what the Lord has put in you. Because sometimes, if you don't discover that 
God has put something in your life that may be, that may be a tendency to start dying because of lack of knowledge. When people die because of what? Lack of knowledge. They are allow themselves to be enslaved by people who are not up to them. They allow themselves to be dictated to by the devil. So when you begin to understand what God has put in your life, then you will wake up to reality. And you begin to go ahead and pursue it. Right? Until you realize the total manifestation of God through that prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. When can it be said that you are prosperous? Number one. Peace. I'm talking about formidable peace. We start raining in your heart. No matter what. Hallelujah. No matter what. Amen. What? put him in fire <laughs> it's not moved we saw the example of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they were prosperous people they put them inside fire the fire couldn't burn them the physical circumstance had no impact they were indestructible because prosperity was planted in them the king depended on their advice on their piece of advice also this had this example of uh, Daniel too, why the king also Nebuchadnezzar depended uh, depended on the advice they need to get from him to be able to interpret the dream. Yeah, that is prosperity. Hallelujah. Uh, when the kings who are rich start looking around for you to come and help them out to give meaning to situation, that's prosperity. So you are prosperous when your word starts getting matter. When your word starts getting being considered. When your word starts prof profiling solution to difficult situation. Then you know for sure. You have to observe it. You have to discover this and know. And begin to walk in that line. Don't st stop walking with your face down. You're going to start walking now with your face look straight up. Hallelujah. No face Amen. down. Because if you are ashamed, you are shame faced, you are ashamed of what is in you, the people around you, they will get a signal and they will oppress you more. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody want to listen to the weak. Nobody want to listen to the defeated. The voice of the defeated can't wake up the defeated. Nobody can wake up somebody who is dead when he himself is dead. The dead man cannot wake up dead man. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's why it's very important to allow this word to penetrate your system and open your eyes. And you can look up clearly and know who you are. And the knowledge of who you are can actually take you to where you are going. One of the pro biggest problems of God <laughs> to his people is that they always are slow. They are very slow at realizing the potential God give them. And so before they now discover, it was almost too late. They've already done a lot of damage before they discover. Hallelujah. You're going to be mindful. I don't know. Everybody say, be mindful. Be mindful. Be mindful of the prosperity. I'm calling you up today with this message. Not just because to teach you and put something in your, in your head. But for you to find out, to discover yourself. The place God has placed you. It's very important. Because if you don't do that, unbeliever will marry you as a partner. Unbeliever. Unbeliever is going to take the glory of God out of you. And because they could see, but you couldn't see. <laughs> they could see, but you couldn't see. And then they just, you just submit yourself to an unbelieving hands. And your marriage becomes messed up. Hallelujah. No. A man of prosperity knows how to take care of himself and walk like a prince. Everybody say, walk like a prince. Walk like a prince. And walk like a princess. Walk when you walk like a prince and princess, honors begin to look for you. Hallelujah. Honor what? Begin, begin to look for you. The Bible said, the face of a righteous man is shines in the book of Ecclesiastes. The face of righteous man shines, shines. Through wisdom wisdom that he has make his face to shine when there is a prosperity in you your face shines your face is radiant hallelujah 
the world is radiant so putting your face down hallelujah Amen. you begin to see when prosperity comes you begin to see uh, a formidable reign of peace within your heart psalm 46 verse 10 psalm 46 verse 10 say be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the nations i will be exalted in the earth hallelujah look at it very well say be still see god always walk in stillness hallelujah mm. you know that you are prosper prosperous when your system your heart is still right. that's prosperity that is the signal when little thing moves you and shake you around begin to shout and yell and people are hey, hey, oh, hey. you know something is going on with you you are not prosperous you're too afraid mm. to become <laughs> mm. not prosperity yet but prosperity is stillness mm. in the means of challenging and unencouraging circumstances that's prosperity the prosperity mm -hmm. The formidable reign of peace in your heart. Occupying your heart. Your bone will feel it. Your system will feel it. Every part of your body will feel it. Your head will also feel it. Because the heat is coming from your heart. Mm. You will just know what to do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will stop running around. The wicked flee when no man pursues. The righteous is as what? Mm. As bold. bold. As lion. Because of the confidence. Of prosperity now number two when you are prosperous what do you see what begin to you what do you begin to see you will begin to see difficulty as stepping stone to moving forward mm. and it's just natural it just built up in you naturally you begin to you begin to delight yourself in challenges if you don't see challenges you are not happy <laughs> if you do not see challenges you are not motivated yeah. in our community this day when they see challenges they keep crying when you don't speak sweet words they get angry <laughs> hallelujah <Amen. laughs> it's a rebook a righteous man you'll be righteous still rebook a wise man you'll be wiser still but when you, somebody receives challenges and begin to to freak out you already know that there's no prosperity inside the heart it's afraid of confrontation a prosperous man is never afraid of confrontation he is ready to answer every man the reason of his hope in christ that's prosperity yeah. it's not a shame i'm not ashamed of the gospel because the power of god unto salvation power of god unto salvation not ashamed very confident yeah. <laughs> very confident any question arising he is ready to respond as long as, as long as god will give him all trans prosperity is more than just counting paper it's more than just counting people we see people today counting papers very rich people but they are not prosperous they run all the way to go and meet men or go help me out i have trouble with this and that and this i have this ache i have this that i have trouble here they are very anxious they are unsettled and their businesses is controlling them right their business and their money making uh, machine become their god that's not what we are talking about here hallelujah that's why god hide the depth of the secret of the kingdom under foolish things so that uh, <laughs> those who are wise in their generation will remain foolish hallelujah and those who are foolish to the world will remain wise <laughs> that is what i love the gospel gospel it's a mystery it's a mystery hallelujah you what you are enjoying today hey, i'm telling you some people are crying for it every day they wake up in the morning and cry for that peace and the lord tell me one day say i give you peace can't you see that <laughs> just think about it think about the way i brought you all the way to this community think about it don't look at all the challenge just look at the way i process everything is there anything that was by your effort and i responded no sir i begin to understand prosperity is greater than the circumstance 
understand the situation you are in. Ha! Hallelujah! Most of the time, when the devil sees that you are prosper prospering, what it does is to re reorganize your your head. And if you give chance for your head to control your heart, you are in trouble. He reorganize your head and tell you, you can reorganize your head by giving you a dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then when a man sleeps, his enemy comes around. <laughs> and put the what? And put what? What does he put? Huh? The tears among the weeds. The tears among the weeds. Why is he doing that? It's polluting. It's to pollute your orientation, your thinking process. Hallelujah. And then eventually you might not eventually have to submit to the fact that you are not up to to reduce you to nothing devil is always very jealous but i know that i have a greater god who is more jealous bible says he is a jealous god hallelujah the devil could be jealous but i have a greater jealous god who will quench the fiery death of the enemy hallelujah you gotta know this my brother and sister Gonna know all these things very important for you to know. Uh, I'm gonna open to the book of Second Samuel, chapter 16, verse 11 to 12. Second Samuel, chapter 16, verse 11 to 12. And David said to Abishai, listen carefully, and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamin do do it? Let him alone. Let him curse. For the Lord had bidden him. Can you hear that? Somebody was cursing him, Shemai. He was mocking him because of the experience he had. His own son was making him to get out of the palace. His own son was about to overthrow David. David was walking with his own chariot. And yeah, this, uh, this person came out and began to stone and curse David. And the, and the people around him said, look, look at this man cursing you and stoning you. Let, let us get over order of him and put him down. But he said, let, leave him alone. Don't touch him. What did he say? He said, let him do his course. Okay. And uh, let him do whatever he wants to do. Now look at verse 12. Now listen, that's the thing I wanted to get right now. About verse 12. He said, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction. And that the Lord will require me good for is causing this day wow how can it cause turning turn suddenly to blessing <laughs> sometimes people curse you in a place where they say you are no good you are bad you are not doing you're not competent enough they mock you with the body language they bully you they do all stuff are you to be freaking out no prosperity means that you have developed a thick skin their opposition to be a proposition from god to prosper you hallelujah that what prosperity is. that's what the life of prosperity is all about that's what it's all about every difficult things around becomes a stepping stone every cause from the enemy become a blessing the more they cause you the more you are blessed <laughs> hallelujah that is how prosperous person is Prosperous person is not uh, because he was insulted or uh, caused if went to the corner and keep crying all day. <laughs> you walk away, ignore it, and walk away. Because if if uh, it's like throwing a stone on a big tree, and then what happened to the stone? The stone goes back to the thrower. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't have anything to do with you. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. People start becoming blessed on the account of you. This is so important. Very, very, very important. A prosperous person, his presence now become a blessing to his environment. Some of us didn't know this, 
and you've been going through your work and you see something is changing in the place of your of your work you you see that things are you know turning different way since you got there but because you didn't keep track record said teach us oh lord to number our days and apply our heart to wisdom so when people are not applying their heart to wisdom look at the way god has been helping your organization since you get there don't let people discover what god is doing to you you should know too what god is doing through you you have to discover your prosperity and stop praying unnecessary prayer god prosper me god prosper me god already prosper you you are to manifest that prosperity mm. you are to discover it you are to stain it you are to appreciate your testimony amen all right, amen. So, all right. we overcome it by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony if you don't recognize your testimony uh god is not uh, very excited about that we saw the case of the uh, people of israel and when they always find challenges they keep crying like babies they they forgot how god took them away from the land of egypt give them all the miracles they forget all those they forget all those and for at each every problem they start crying they start shouting and god was very hungry they were grumbling god saw they were grumbling that failure to discover god's presence the prosperity as a sin <laughs> hallelujah and god said look these people will not get to the promised land they won't get there so god did not allow them to get there they all died in wilderness except caleb and joshua and the young ones at the age of 20 and below ha today brethren i want to wake up wake up to reality and know that the spirit of prosperity is right beside you you need to discover that hallelujah deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 8 deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 8 the lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto look at that okay hey. are you following me yes, whatever you set your hand on become blessings wow that's what the bible says it didn't say you got to ask it said whatever when when prosperity come in fullness from the heart the prosperity from the heart is that your your laying hands on begin to command blessings Amen. wherever you stay begin to change the cloud begin to change and respond because you carry prosperity it's what you carry it's not about what you feel prosperity is not about what you feel of course when prosperity comes it's manifestation in its fullness you begin to see the physical manifestation around you but first of all it has to start from within mm -hmm. if you just say prosperity just money making and counting money then what happens to the wilderness training when god brings you slowly and begin to train you does it mean you are you are poor you are poor at those times never god is not going to allow you to lack anything <laughs> hallelujah he said do not be anxious for anything that's what jesus said okay he was talking to the trainee the trainer and those who are being trained every christian hallelujah <laughs> be anxious for nothing so god says that he is able to provide for the lily of the feet the bed of the hair and he can provide for you so he said if you have all these things will you not be satisfied all right so there is something about prosperity that's more than what we are thinking today hallelujah trying to try to uh, put people in put people in prison and try to force them put them in forced labor in order to exploit them is that prosperity all right say prosperity is collecting a lot of time from people and gather money from church members and begin to you know manipulate them with doctrines or stuff in order to be able to get more money <laughs> more money to your pocket <laughs> that prosperity what i'm talking about is prosperity is that despite not even being paid as a pastor 
God is making way for you. Ha. Mm. Hallelujah. You mm. don't need to open your mouth and say, I'm lacking now. Help me out. I need something. God is just turning up people. God is just walking your way through the process. And you lack nothing. Mm. That's prosperity. It's deeper. It's deeper than self-establishment. It's deeper than self-aggrandizing. It's deeper than self-acclaimed message of the gospel. It's deeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Prosperity is God at work. Not men at work. Hallelujah. What do I say? Amen. Not men at work. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Genesis chapter 30 verse 26 to 27. Genesis 30, 26 to 27. Give me my wife and children for whom I have served thee. Let them, let me go. For thou knows my service which I have done thee. 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Look at that. That's a serious issue. Laban was able to understand clearly that the presence of Jacob was a tumultuous blessing to his family. He couldn't hold it. He opened it up and, and told him, Hallelujah. Ha, my friend, my brother and sisters, God is still working with these these days. The prosperity is more than ownership. Amen. More than ownership. You are the owner of ownership. <laughs> Amen. You are the maker of ownership. Hallelujah. That's what prosperity is. <laughs> Laban is the owner of the house, owner of all the sheep. But when Jacob came over there, there's some things he did that make all the whole house, the whole flock of animal to multiply. And the blessing of Naaman to multiply. So he is actually a kingmaker. <laughs> Jacob became what? A kingmaker. Maker of kings. So a prosperous man is a maker of king. Is a man that you don't easily see. It's underneath. That is making a whole organization to prosper. Some people today, they are not, their eyes are not open. Their eyes are not open. There are anointed people around them all over the places, but they just don't know <laughs> that God is actually placing those people to prosper them. They don't know. Until they begin to kick against the anointed and God begin, begin to get angry and their business begin to go down. That's when they start realizing. My friend, my brothers and sisters, arise up today in your heart and know that you are a unique man and woman being and begin to recognize what God has placed in you. And do not allow the devil to take advantage of you and think you are worthless. Nothing to mock about you. Nothing. But you need to realize that you carry prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, Genesis chapter 45, verse 4 to 9. Genesis chapter 14, 45, verse 4 to 9. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother, Joseph, the one you showed into egypt it was sold into egypt verse 5 and now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for setting me here because it was to save life that god sent me ahead of you verse 6 for two years now there has been famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reap, reaping verse 7 but God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your life by a great deliverance. Verse 8. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh. Rise up on your feet. Prosperity make you a kingmaker. They make you a king of kings. A small king of kings. Hallelujah. That what prosperity does to you. The decision, a, the decision the old leader is making. The decision the king is making. The decision the governor is making. Is actually coming from you. That is what we call prosperity. We are going to pray to the father. 
I need to discover your prosperity in my life right now. Open my eyes to discover the, the prosperity you are blessing me. Make me discover. My eye is too short-sighted. Open my eyes and make me discover what you put in me. Don't let me to start behaving like a beggar anymore. It's enough. I am called to be prosperous. You made me prosper. Help me to discover what you are putting me. So that I know how to usher my word at the right time. Speak the right word at the right time. Do the right thing. And position myself rightly. I do not want to die for lack of knowledge. Father, help me to discover what you are putting me. The prosperity you place in me today. Let it begin to manifest. Manifest. All my ignorance, I drop it today. I drop all my ignorance. I drop all my lack of knowledge. Today, I embrace your prosperity. I embrace your prosperity. All those things that makes me, that make me to start feeling uncomfortable in the midst of challenges need to stop. All those things that compete with my peace need to stop. I am prosperous in the name of Jesus. No longer is worry going to be allowed. No longer will I live my life like a beggar. No more. No more will I allow circumstances to rule my life. No longer will I allow what men say determine me. It is over today. Prosperity is my portion. It is over today. Prosperity is my portion. I embrace the prosperity of the gospel. Oh, I embrace the prosperity of the gospel. Oh Lord, I thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Raise up your hand as we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. As we stand here this morning, we receive your prosperity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every scale in our eyes that have pre prevented us over a long time from knowing who you have made us to be today, let them begin to fall down. From now on, the inspiration of the prosperity you are putting us, let it begin to manifest. Amen. We come against the spirit of ignorance. Amen. Let them depart from us. And anyone watching this video right now and saying amen, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, your coronavirus affliction shall die. Wherever your family is under the torment of Satan right now, I have the Lord God Almighty to shine his face upon that very fellow. Let that torment disappear. Let that demonic torment go. I command deliverance upon your family, upon the member of your family. Whoever is under the spell and torment of the devil right now, let them get healing and deliverance. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah.